Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is just kind of do the second step here. Um, I should have probably done these in the same video, but I just didn't really want to make the video that long. So um, here's kind of my second part to um, doing composition of two functions when we're taking the inverse by using triangles. And again, the reason I'm going to be using triangles here is because the points that I'm taking the inverse on, the inverse sign of 1 fourth and the inverse sine of cosine of 1 third are not general points that I'm aware of that are on the unit circle. So therefore, to be able to evaluate for their angle, I'm going to create a triangle. Now again, remember, when we're trying to evaluate for secant, we only know how to take the secant of an angle. So therefore, theta is equal to sine inverse of 1 fourth, right? If we could replace um, sine inverse of 1 fourth with theta, then we could take the inverse of, or we could take the secant. We could take se you take secants of an angle, right? The trigonometric functions, we take them of angles. However, when we're taking inverse, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the angle. So the inverse sine of 1 4, uh, the inverse sine of 1 fourth is going to produce us an angle. Now, if you had a calculator, you could easily plug that into your calculator. But assuming we don't have a calculator, how are we going to figure out what is theta so I can, so I can take this um, secant of it? Well. What I realize is to solve for theta, I'm going to have to undo the inverse sine. So to do that, I'm going to take the sine of both sides. And therefore, by doing that, what I have now is the sine of theta is equal to 1 fourth. That doesn't do much for telling me what exactly theta is. It doesn't tell, gives me a value, hey, your angle is this. But what this does tell me is the sine of theta is equal to 1 fourth. OK, well, this helps me out because now, if I am um, creating a triangle, I have enough information to create a, a right triangle. Now, remember, sine can only be positive in the first and the second quadrant, right? I can either draw a triangle like this or like this. But remember, since we're dealing with the inverse sine, the range of inverse sine is in the first and the fourth quadrant. So this, second, so this triangle in the second quadrant cannot work. So I'm just going to erase it. OK, so if we have here's our theta, we're creating a right triangle. Well, to, fi to help me figure out secant, I know that secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So therefore, I need to figure out what is here. And the reason why I left these two videos off is because before, we just used Pythagorean triples, right? We just said, oh, Pythagorean, you know, 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, 5. It's easy. Well, here, we can't use them. So we have to go back and actually use our Pythagorean theorem. Oops, four so. Let's just do, let me just write it out just in case. So you can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a, b are your legs, and c is going to be your hypotenuse. So therefore, I have a squared plus, so I have a squared plus um, 1 squared equals 4 squared. So I have a squared plus 1 equals 16 minus 1 minus 1 a squared equals 15. Take the square root, take the square root. a equals plus or minus 15. But since it is in the, um, so that's going to be plus or minus the square root of 15. However, since we see that our triangle is in the first quadrant, we know that a is going to equal positive square root of 15. Now, we're still not done, though. Because remember, we're trying to figure out, so a equals the square, positive square root of 15. <clears throat> so now we need to take the secant of this. So remember, remember cosine, secant is, I'm sorry, the inverse of cosine. So remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the secant is going to be, let's see if I have more room here. The secant is going to be 4 over the square root of 15. So now all I simply do is I need to rationalize the denominator. And I get 4 square root of 15 over 15. And that's my final answer. Ta-da! OK, so now let's get into the next one. So the next one, um, now we, what, what we want to do is evaluate for um, cosine. But now we have a negative angle. And the negatives always kind of make us a little bit tricky here. Um, because for cosine to be negative here, so I'm going to, instead of doing this whole little thing I did over here, I'm just going to draw my triangle. So when can cosine? Um, equal negative 1 third. Well, there's two triangles. If you're just going to draw my quadrants here, I could have a right triangle going up, and I could do a negative 1, 3, 
or I could do negative 1, 3. And it all really depends on both of these work, all right? But then we got to remember, well, remember, we're doing the cosine inverse. And cosine inverse only works for when we're taking the range of our cosine. And remember, the range for cosine is between 0 and pi. So therefore, this is the only triangle that's going to work. OK? Let's put the negative 1 now down below. So now if I want to figure out tangent, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent. So now I need to figure out, well, what is my adjacent side? And I'll call this b, OK? So again, we have our same information. We could say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the main important thing when we're looking at this is that um, <clears throat> when we're looking at this one, you know, we, we can't use a Pythagorean trick. We got to use Pythagorean theorem. So all a squared is negative 1 squared plus b squared equals 3 squared, which is um, 9. So this becomes 1 plus b squared equals 9. Subtract 1, subtract 1. b squared equals ah, equals 8. Take the square root, take the square root. b squared equals plus or minus. Now taking the square root of 8, we don't want to plug in our calculator and abbreviate. We want to simplify this. So to show you the longhand, that would be 4 times 2. Right? Square root of 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. But I can take, but by reading it this way, I can now simplify the square root of 4 is to 2 square root of 2. Okay? And it's also going to be positive because you can see that here, sine is positive. Right? The, the height is positive in the second quadrant. So it's not going to be my negative. It's only going to be positive. So now tangent is going to be um, 2 or opposite over adjacent. So therefore, I have um, 2 square root of 2 over negative 1. And if I had a little bit more space on my board, I would write negative 2 square root of 2, um, as that is your final answer. But I just don't want to rewrite it, because um, I ran out of space with my board. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you um, complete the inverse trigonometric functions when you have a positive or negative um, by using triangles without having to use Pythagorean triples or Pythagorean um, or knowing your Pythagorean triples, actually having to do Pythagorean theorem. Thanks.